They're like maracas. Uh huh. Yeah, let's have a party. Um, what I have for you today is the no nonsense, no thinking approach to completing the square. I like not thinking. <laughs> I know. And this method's for you. Yes, if you follow this method, you will not have to think. Huh? Huh. Okay, and here's the method. All right, to complete the square, we first need the leading coefficient to be one. Let me make it look more like a one. Yes. Okay, next you need to shove the constants. It's slang, dog. Yeah, okay. And then, what does it say? It says half the middle coefficient squared add it to both sides. All right. Half the middle coefficient squared, add it to both sides. Then you want to complete that square. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I forgot the fifth step. Yes. Step five, square root property and solve. Awesome. For my first example, I want to take a look at this guy up here. Okay. First, I want to get the leading coefficient to be 1. Is it? It is. Check. Next, I want to shove the constants. What that means is I need to subtract off that 1 from both sides. Okay. So then, I'll be left with x squared minus 8x is equal to a minus 1. Fun. Now the constants are on one side, the variables are on the other. I need to take half the middle coefficient squared and add it to both sides. And I need you to actually do this. Over on the side, what's my middle coefficient? My middle coefficient is a minus eight. Great. Then you need to find the middle coefficient over two. What does that mean? Divided by two. If it's a fraction, double the denominator. Uh-huh. Then this is a minus four, sure. Then the middle coefficient over 2 squared, oh, minus 4 squared, 16. Yes, that's step 3. We take half the middle coefficient squared and add it to both sides. And that's where I'm at right here. Minus 8x is equal to a minus 1. Uh-huh, this is all side work. And speaking of side, I take half the middle coefficient squared and I add that to both sides. Yes. Okay. On the right, 16 minus 1 is 15. Okay. But wait. Keep going. Don't stop now. Don't stop. Get it. Get it. I want to complete that square. On the left. Is this a square of something? 4. Is this a square of something? X. 4 times X, double it. Is it? It's squared. That's why we took half the middle coefficient squared and added it to both sides. So then this is X minus 4 every single time. It's the middle coefficient over two that goes right there. Uh-huh, you don't even have to think about it. Yeah, and then that's squared. Great, now we wanna use the square root property and solve. Finish him. Yeah, um, that's from the last video. Yeah, plus or minus, whenever you take the square root of both sides, you're not gonna forget the plus or minus. Okay, square root 15. Okay. Finish him. X turns out to be 4 plus or minus the square root of 15. Can I simplify the root of 15? No. Yeah! A box. And a flower. For our next example, we want to make sure the leading coefficient's 1. Is it? It's not. So then I need to go through and I need to divide everything by that crazy or lazy eight. Great. What you do on the one side, you must also do onto the other. Right. Um, some books will switch the first two steps. Right. Why would they do that? Mm, I don't know. I like to put the leading coefficient one because that's the most frequently forgotten step in this no nonsense, no thinking approach. So I put it first, you know, primary. Yeah. Um, maybe you remember it. Here we go. Ooh wee. Yes. I have x squared minus 4 divided by 8 is 1 half. 
x plus 1 eighth is, is that undefined or is that 0? Mm-hmm, 0. Okay, so now we want to shove our constants. That means get that to the other side. So then, in doing so, I have x squared minus 1 half x is a minus 1 eighth. Okay, so now I need to take half the middle coefficient squared and add that to both sides. Okay, so what is my middle coefficient? This is side work. Yeah, my middle coefficient is, oh no, minus 1 half. Then my middle coefficient over 2. Right, when you're having a fraction, double the denominator. Okay, so then this is going to be minus 1 fourth. Yeah, so then my middle coefficient over 2 squared. Yeah, when you square a fraction, that's the squares of the numerator divided by the squares of the denominator. So this is 1 over 16. Yes. So you take half the middle coefficient squared and you add that to both sides. So then here I have x squared minus 1 half x plus 1 16. Uh -huh. And then that's going to be equal to minus 1 eighth plus 1 16. That's my half my middle coefficient squared added that to both sides. Now complete that square. Oh, so on the left, no nonsense thinking approach. Every single time, it's the middle coefficient over 2. Ooh, so that's a minus 1 fourth squared. Put x right in there. On the right, you need to add those fractions. Common denominator, mm-hmm, 16, mix that a 2. Minus 1 is a minus 1 over 16. I think that's right, but you should check it. All right, I'm almost done. I'm using the square root property and solving. Get it, get it. X minus 1 fourth. And whenever I use a square root property, I'm not going to forget that. Plus or minus square root minus 1 16th. Now I'm taking the square root of a fraction. That just so happens to be the root of the numerator divided by the root of the denominator. Because the root of a quotient is the quotient of the roots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a 4. Uh huh. And then this is going to be plus or minus the square. No. Let's get rid of that square root. Let's get rid of this marker. Keeps making mistakes. Ah, yes. This one will be better. This is um, 1 over 4 i. Ay, ay, ay. Imaginary. Finish him. Yeah. So then I have x is equal to 1 fourth plus or minus 1 fourth i. And I say if it's a complex number, leave it like that. Some books will add those numerators. But, hmm, not me. And a flower.